Hi everybody, welcome back to Two Dudes One Garage. Uh, my name is Leo. And this is Alex. And don't worry, from the last episodes, I didn't get abducted or anything. I just cut my hair and look different enough. So uh, <laughs> there you go, right? <laughs> All right. <laughs> so we have a we have an article here from um, CoinDesk. It says it states uh, to understand Bitcoin, we need to understand what money is. What is money really? I don't know, man. I, I thought money was like just a piece of paper that you use to buy things, and you 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 contribute something to society, and they give you money, and you get like little coupons, and you go spend them wherever you want, McDonald's or um, get some Jordans. I don't know, like <laughs> buy things that you need. Um, it definitely is. Yeah. It's so, I mean, and then it could also be uh, like a financial tool to make more money, more coupons. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, so what do you think about that, Alex? Well, um, yeah, and they talk about Bitcoin a lot being a store of value. And this is kind of what we we're talking about. Um, it's just going to talk about money and it's going to talk about Bitcoin and kind of, you know, some of the some of the differences and, and whatnot. Um, there's different strengths and weaknesses to different money. A lot of like the narrative about Bitcoin is like that's a store of value. Obviously, you can do things um, on a decentralized uh, infrastructure versus like a more traditional, which has a lot of benefits with anonymity and whatnot and global uh, implications that is a lot faster. So it's a lot of pillars, like you don't have to get through a lot of walls. Um, so there's all that, but we're going to get into this a little bit. All right. So the article states, uh, what is money? It's one of my favorite questions to ask clients. There's no right or wrong answer. A financial advisor really rarely ask this question themselves. The key to understand Bitcoin is learning a monetary history and gaining knowledge of digital networks. Uh, all right, so yeah, most people don't know what money is. They just know they work and they get it yeah. and they use it to pay their bills and rent and buy things that they want. I mean, they don't really understand like, you know, what's, what's it called? The gross domestic product or whatever GDP um that the world has and how we gain that you know as far as like value in our dollar yeah oh, absolutely i think the more you learn about money the more like fun weird things and like obviously there's shady things you can do but also just like the more money you have the more money you can make easier you know and that's like a big thing you own a company and you're you know have a lot of revenue then you figure out where to you know uh, pay that out or do uh, advertising and all that stuff, but then also how to reinvest in your company. You want to get more employees to work for you to make more money, right? So there's so many different things you can do with money than just a lot of people just go to a job. Cool. I got money to pay for my bills, whatever, where you can be you know, reinvesting it or whatnot. I, I see that for a lot of people. They just like, cool, I made a lot of money. Now I can buy a nice car. It's like, dude, there's so many other things you can do with money to make more money instead of just dumping all your money, right? So I don't know. That's right. Uh, so uh, onwards was the article. Uh, through history, we've moved from physical primitive goods such as money like seashells and uh, wham, what was that, wampum, to <laughs> physical metal like gold and silver to prepare receipts backed by physical metal to govern issues fully fiat currency. Yeah, that's not what we're doing now. We don't back anything <laughs> with gold. We just print these coupons out like it's a thing to do. Uh, the better... <laughs> The better the money is at holding its value, the more it incentivizes people to uh, delay consumptions and instead dedicate resources to productions and future deleting capital accumulation, improving living standards. Uh, in economist, uh, Saifi Dean Amos wrote in his book, The Bitcoin Standard. We've only known a fiat system during our life, so it's not easy to comprehend anything else. Money is what we receive for the economy. Um, outputs we provide for societies instead of needing a skill to weight our precious metals we have a scale in the dollars at our units of accounts and measuring sticks of what something costs money allows us to specialize and become an expert and pay for expertise from others money provides for trade that's very true um yeah we went from bartering from like goods you know like i have you know I have rice or I have water and let's, can I trade you some rice for some water? Yeah, cool. Um, to, uh, using gold and metal. And then we kind of just let all that go. And we're just like, dude, we're just going to hang on to these dollars, these coupons, and we're just going to use them and we're going to use them to buy things. And, and I feel like we, as a, as an, as people, 
age that we're in. Yeah, last century. Or yeah, like yeah, exactly. Like we've relied more on services than actually making things. Like we worry more about you know what are we gonna go eat? Like what are we gonna buy? What are we gonna do? Like um, who's having a party? Like then then why don't I just make something that's gonna help me out, make my life easier? You know what I mean? Mm. I don't know. That's how I feel. I feel like we're more of a service. We're more of in a service age in this, in this, in this middle, I don't know, this century than there is of a, of like, you know, creating things like electricity and like, yeah. like, you know, like your own um, table. yeah, your own like table. Just, yeah. Own yeah. Table I made my own us. table. Yeah. Good. I made this Thank table. You, sir. I, it's, you know, I, it. I only measured once <laughs> cut twice. You so, you know, but it's still hanging in there. Um, yeah, exactly. Like making things like, yeah, it could be a table. It could be a microchip. It could be a blockchain. Shoot, yeah. It could be a, a contract in a blockchain. I don't know. Like that's making things, bro. Yeah. How many people are doing that? Most people are just taking. You know what I mean? That's how I feel. Well, hmm. I mean, if you look at a seashell, if everybody has seashells, I mean, if you swap it out for dollar bills, it's really not that different. You know, if you think about it in that sense, yeah. which, um, you know, we just had slightly more physical things for a long time. I can understand gold and metal and precious metals and, um why they'd be worth more or less. But I, I will say, yeah, like our society is somewhat like desensitized to money. I think like the, in the abstract form of all the things it can do or whatnot, because it's so digital now, like you literally don't even need cash or anything. It's just like a number written on a, yeah, a number written in your app or your, you know, bank account or whatnot. Um, you still get stuff printed out, but it's just less and less nowadays. Right. Like, yeah. Like, you know, if you go to dinner with somebody, you're like, oh, I can cash app or Zelle or Venmo, like you, any, any amount, you like kind of like forget that the stuff is worth more than just a number. Right. But, uh, I think looking at developed society too, the more it becomes, um, more developed. So traditionally you have a lot of people that work, um, in the fields and everything and you, you, uh, grow your own food to live. And as, um, society, it kind of um, has been proved in history and stuff um, that once there's a lot of farmers in the Midwest, right, of the U.S., like they take care of that and these people take care of this and these people take care of electricity. The, the need for people to be constantly making things inherently just to survive on your own goes down. So people don't value that as much and we do become more of like a service um, and more specialized in like a lot of different fields and it does save you time, right? Like I don't have to, you know, uh, grow my own food or anything, or uh, go make my own candles for light, right? So um, some of that stuff is, I think, beneficial, but over time, it you do erode the appreciation and the value that you are getting out of things because everything can be done for you, especially if, you know, let's say I, I don't know, won the lottery or something. I just like, go buy everything. I don't have to have to do anything ever again. You look at like a couple hundred years ago, that's not the case. Like I have to have cattle and this and whatever and sell things just to survive. Right. Because there's literally no electricity yet. <laughs> right. And who else is going to do anything for you unless you, you sell some cattle or you, uh, you know, paint a painting or whatever. And there's, there was always services, um, specialization, et cetera. Like, yes, there's always going to be somebody that's a, a waiter or waitress or, you know, works at a hotel. But I think in terms of us doing things, uh, yeah, we provide more services than build things. If that's, it's kind of a random, kind of a wild tangent for us to go on, but yeah, yeah, it's true. So, um, and that definitely ties into money and the value of it. So, So uh, moving on with the article, money's five critical traits. Money does not need to increase in quantity to be effective. It needs to have critical traits, visibility, scarcity, profitability, recognizability, and durability. Gold was money for thousands of years and an ounce of gold in Roman times by a tailored tonic in the 1970s, a fitted suit and today a broad array of fine custom suits, gold. While wow. having uh, scarcity, durability, and recognition fails miserably at being um, divisible, portable, gold receipts, and fiat currencies solve this issue and allow global trade to expand. Yeah, man. Like, putting it that way is like, okay, back in the Roman days, like an ounce of gold would get you, you know, an outfit. Now it's going to get you, you know, in the 70s, they got you a tailor suit. Now it's going to get you several tailor suits. Like the value of gold did grow from what it was in the roman days and and um 
yeah, the, I don't know if the dollar is going to be doing that anytime soon. <laughs> and, you know, we're definitely seeing that not being the case. It just seems like everything's slightly going up every year. And some people would argue going up a lot. I think uh, inflation was like 7% or something like that. Um, as, you know, it is significant. It's hard to know. Maybe you're getting raised, maybe you're not, but regardless, everything is uh, going up in value. Ho oh, sorry, up in price. Hopefully, at some point, um, we are able to stabilize and kind of all the crazy stuff is happening and printing money. And, uh, you know, the Fed, um, if they are really able to, like, pull down those interest rates and strengthen the value of the dollar and all that stuff, like, I think it would be good for everybody. But we just really haven't seen like anything uh kind of unprecedented right like worth like okay everybody stay at home and just like we'll print you tons of money and that has brought people up people were at home not doing a lot so they're looking at crypto but then also they're like my money isn't worth as much so now they're looking at crypto for that reason too which i don't blame them why wouldn't you want something that holds its value and retains it a little bit better and then we're kind of at the mercy of like, well, my money's only as valuable as how much you're going to print or how much you say you're going to print. And that could change at any time. So, oh, I'm going to just print more. Well, okay, cool. Thanks. I don't have any power control over that. Where um, in uh, decentralized, you know, Bitcoin, Ethereum, all these other coins, like they write the rules for how much their uh, value and their money is worth. And if you write a really good system and everything and set it up correctly, the fees and everything going back into the system and the treasury and all the stuff like you get a very healthy economy that's gonna uh, is a lot better than than dollars i mean there's no debate that there's money better than uh, just cash and uh, american dollar honestly i mean i don't know if the whole world is caught up to that yet but it's definitely true yep uh, all right so uh fee uh, moving on with the article uh Fiat currency is outstanding at solving for uh, divisibility, profitability, and recognizability. The problem lies in scarcity and durability against missing the mark at being approval money. Bitcoin has all five properties of money, blah, 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 blah. This article about Bitcoin processing $3 trillion worth of payments. All right. So, yeah. So, he just kind of repeated himself what he said earlier and threw, plugged, his, plugged his article. Well, it also said here that Bitcoin processed three trillion worth of payments, and it actually exceeded American Express and Discover, which is is double American Express and like what six times more than Discover. So that's pretty crazy. I mean, that's very significant, right? Because a lot of these traditionally are like, I don't know what all credit card companies are, but they seem uh, first world, you, you know, where uh, all these other cryptos can be every every you know global. So it's kind of crazy. It has more of a market share in that sense of potential uh transactions right so that's pretty significant yeah that's that's very interesting because uh i mean i see uh american express i mean they, they picked american express and discover those are like the two most least favorable they would have said visa and mastercard yeah. i would have been like damn that's but it's all right you know what i mean but they, is this processing or is this is this uh transaction uh, volume transaction like dude you can't even use your bitcoin everywhere you know what i mean as there's more places you can use your your american express than bitcoin bro so what i'm seeing some so what so here. what i'm saying is is like where they are just looking at like how are they counting this were they looking at wallet deposits like from exchanges like straight up exchanges i think that's how i feel they were counting this they were like all right well exchanges are doing this many transactions uh, let's just say three trillion worth yeah it is true. There's a lot of facts and figures out there and you can skew them any way you want. So you really got to look at the data a lot, but at face value, it is significant, okay. but you're, but you're right. Yeah. I'll give that to you. Yeah. Yeah. When I saw that, I kind of skimmed past it. I was like, ah, I'll, I'll let it slide. But yeah, that, <laughs> what I'm saying is like, dude, just uh, come on, Bitcoin. Like if I can, if I can, wherever they're sending American, wherever they're accepting American Express, if I can use Bitcoin, like, yeah, I'm obviously going to use Bitcoin, but like, yeah, that's, I, I see this more popular than that anywhere i mean credit cards 100 percent are more popular we can't deny that and if we're going to look at all credit cards like yeah they're going to exceed a lot i don't even want to know but the thing is it's like we're just saying that main point is if we have a better version of money and bitcoin's only been around like 10 15 years right and now because that has been like a proven thing that does work in a decentralized way um there's a lot of benefits and there's all these other companies developing going, oh, wow, like this works really well. And um, we see you know, really smart people are like, we're, we can build really incredible systems. I mean, now you can go on DeFi and instead of going to like a professional trader, 
like, oh, I can look for a smart contract protocol that automatically runs for me, right? That lends my money out and then reinvests and lends out a percentage of that. It's like, you can do all this stuff on a crowdsource thing that like, because you have so many people on there, fees are lower. It auto compounds for you. It's like, it's crazy all the stuff that you can do that you would need to go talk to somebody for, right? So I don't think we've even seen what smart contracts and crypto can do yet with, with all this stuff. I know we're just specifically talking about Bitcoin, but just the concept of money in this article. But I think there's so many implications and it's just going to keep growing all the cool stuff we can do. Yeah, as of right now, I mean, all this smart contract, all these NFTs, metaverse, and all these uh, decentralized, you know, finance you know contracts and all that stuff they're mainly you know some of them are going on right now but most of them i would say are like a promise they're just a promise right now like metaverse is a promise you know payment processing is kind of a promise in a worldwide base not like just like a mom and pop shop taking you know doge or bitcoin but i'm talking about walmart and like you know amazon uh so yeah they're all promises right now and i think they're getting ready for it but good things take time yeah. good things you can't rush into things well one of the biggest things you're seeing in this space is there's so much potential. So people lend money out. And that's like a big thing for smart contracts is like, oh, you want to lend or borrow or whatever to build your own things. You really believe in it. So there's a lot of money out there. You might have to pay a little bit if you want to borrow. Right. But that's like anything. Um, but a smart contract, I don't even need to like, go meet you. I can just go online. It's like, oh, cool. Like it's trustless. Right. Because you have to pay this back. I have to give you this in a set time frame. Like it's awesome. And I could be borrowing from some in South Africa, Antarctica, if there's anybody there, um, you know, Australia, any, anywhere, right? And you just like get online. I don't need to know your name. I'm just like, hey, I need this money. I can pay you this amount, whatever. But there's so many creative things you do because they're seeing the space build out so much. So you definitely see a lot of financial tools right now, but I do think there's going to be a lot of other huge things in this space. But right now it's just dominated by finance. So, yeah. All we want is money, so yeah. <laughs> let's make these coins make us money, and then we'll figure the rest out later. Right. Um, so uh, how Bitcoin functions as money. Oh, uh, well, uh, the, the stage of monetization for any object over history has followed as similar cycles. The object being collected, a storage of value, a medium of exchange, and a unit of account until fiat currency. Part of what gave something value was difficult in obtaining or the times to create it. Uh, Bitcoin solves this ish, this value proposition for its mining process called proof of work and the difficult uh, adjustments, which allows the mining network to adjust up or down computing powers needed to solve from the next blockchain. Uh, so pretty much what it's saying is like, oh, you know, uh, it took time for money to figure itself out. Like as far as like who's gonna who's gonna approve these payments? Who's gonna you know? Are you really sending money to this person? Are you really is this person really buying something? Um, we're talking about credit cards and like debit cards and stuff. And uh, they're saying, well, Bitcoin kind of solves all that because it has a mining issue of like in the blockchain. It like literally, uh, Bitcoin is mining pretty much saying, uh, yes, you are buying something, and I yes, I will pay this person, and it gets logged on a blockchain, and therefore it shows the transaction in your wallet. Um, that's proof of work where uh, you pay a miner to process this uh, pro uh, ledger. Um, the difficulty adjustment goals are to help ensure the supply schedule remaining very predictable, which is new blockchain every 10 minutes and it affects uh, yet simply uh, solutions to very complicated computing science problems and distributing cons uh, consensus network. Bitcoin mining is costly and over time consuming, yet the verification of the transaction by nodes and by the networks located around the global is effortless and almost free. Bitcoin most significant benefit is having a fi uh, final settlement in a digital world and recording time leverage and maintaining uh, main chain or uh, lightning network depending on the needs for parties involving when measuring speeds you must include fiat settlements for example credit card trans credit card transactions are not finalized before 24 hours that's true it takes time uh, when you buy something uh it'll show pending but it will not finalize within 24 to 48 hours of that transaction um but the funny thing is is like you can't even do anything at that point like yeah it's gonna take 24 hours to like let's say mine you know in their servers yeah. like but even if like you were like hey man that wasn't my transaction they're still gonna be like well we can't stop it like you gotta let it go and then we'll figure it out afterwards you know and i i, I don't know if that works the same way when you're mining can you just be like 
No, you can't. You have to let it process through when you're mining. Yeah. That's why they say don't send money to a wallet that you're not unsure of because you can't get it. Like, right. you can't stop it, right? right? Same thing with their network. You know, you can't stop it. You, yeah. uh, but in their back end, they can log, go in there and override it or whatever and give your money back. Yeah. I don't know how. Well, one big thing that I'm thinking about, especially if we're going to talk about, you know, thousands of years, because now we kind of have a number of banks that are, you know, somewhat reputable and have been around for a long time that maybe within the last 50 years, people wouldn't even conceptualize of like, oh, this bank doesn't exist anymore. So great. They can do your settlements and transactions just like Bitcoin can. But what happens if the bank just goes under? Bitcoin is locked in, you know, this thing where unless the whole system goes down, nobody really has access to your stuff unless you screw up, right? Um, that's a big difference where it's like, oh, cool. The bank just didn't. And of course, some of them are federally insured. But then what if you have millions of dollars? It's only insured up to a certain point. So, you know, people complain about like Bitcoin and stuff being hacked. Banks can too. And they do. I have friends in fin finance that say like, I've watched banks get hacked. Like it, it happens, you know, um, or somebody working on the inside. You can't have anybody on Bitcoin on the inside. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like inside the block, you know, like this doesn't happen. Right. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of strengths to, um, being cryptographic transactions. Yep. Uh, the future of money. Money has allowed individuals and business to function and thrive. Money that has all five key traits. Once again, visibility, scarcity, profitability, recognizability, durability, <laughs> help enhance trade and economics, and all act actors use the same units of measurements. Imagine a minute we were playing Monopoly and I'm the banker, and each round, instead of um, bidding, a bidding by the rules established at the beginning of the game, I institute a new tweak or change. How do you strategize for your turn? Um, I take my money out and I put it in, uh, in Doge. Because <laughs> they ain't going to switch it. nothing up. So, okay, continuing on to the article. Money is no different. An individual in business makes these decisions uh, subconsciously. And when we all use the same rules to measure goods and services, the unlock and more uh, productive society and economy, in my view, Bitcoin as money makes that a possibility. It allows for saving, no credit, but families run on quick and inexpensive payments and incentive structures to reward value, producing value and living with your means. Your purchase power can increase by simply saving, not decreasing like it does today. Very true. Um, I mean, that's in a good, healthy crypto environment, like not a pre-World War III, post-pandemic world where everyone's right. freaking out and pulling their money out and breaking 75K for you know bitcoin and now it's like at 34 35 you know what i mean it's like what is going on you just lost half your money in a in gold in gold we're not talking about some sketchy you know rug pull we're talking about freaking gold what we're talking about right now and yeah as long as the economy is healthy and people um aren't afraid and they believe in it yeah uh, you would make more money keeping you know your money in bitcoin than actually having it in fiat because therefore you know the inflation rate um bitcoin is nearly one trillion uh asset today in the world yeah i mean i don't know if it's a trillion still it's not it's not yeah and this article is probably probably made like 20 minutes ago and i'm saying <laughs> 20 minutes ago and then it's not a trillion anymore it's like 800 million or something. i don't know uh so an assets in or uh the magnitude of larger a bitcoin uh as bitcoin becomes a teenager in the 2022 man i don't think it hit puberty yet man <laughs> what would a world using Bitcoin as money be like? Anyways, um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, Bitcoin and, and like the, and the whole scarcity and like, you know, increase in value. It works great when people are constantly buying at higher rates, you know, higher highs, yeah. higher highs. You don't want higher lows because then, you know, you're losing money. Um, or I mean, not higher lows, like higher highs, but you want higher highs. You don't want lower lows. Yeah. Um, so, uh this article's pretty neat. Um, how do you feel about that, man? Well, I think at the end of the day, it's great to say, you know, everybody's going to buy it at a higher price or whatever, and it appreciates the whole market. You really just have to have, as I've harped on over and over, like adoption and then actually, you know, usage. And that just comes through awareness. And I think that's part of the reason we wanted to do this because it's just, it's fun to do. It's fun to watch the space, but it's also like tell people like how beneficial 
uh, crypto is in general. And I do think we're getting double tapped at the moment with um, post pandemic stuff, uh, the um, Federal Reserve, they're, they're tightening down and people are getting nervous in the financial um, economy uh, sectors in general, and then crypto is a lot smaller. So it shrinks quicker then the um, stock market is already shrinking a lot. And then we have inflation. And then we also have the, um, you know, the new Russia, Ukraine war, which just is freaking people out. So you kind of have like a multiplier of fear. And um, honestly, I think if uh, crypto was already way more established, probably, I don't even think anything would happen. It's just so, it's so small, you know, when I talk about being a teenager, like I can kind of, I can kind of see that, you know, it's maybe not quite there, but it's, it's a good metaphor in the sense that it really hasn't been around very long, but it's not super new. We might be early, but it's not new. Um, a lot of people might understand like the concept of like, oh, Bitcoin's around and people use it, but that's it. And they don't like know what the hell that means. And they're like, what's a digital wallet and all that stuff. So, um, the more that happens, I, you know, the market's going to stabilize and the prices, yeah, honestly, it's, um, the end of February, it's like the lowest, I think prices like new higher lows than like the last, you know, year or two. So st still technically high, but it's lower and people don't have that perspective. Right. But, um, yeah, I think at some point, once all this goes away, it's just going to be like a rubber band and just pop back up because people are like ready and willing to invest, but there's gotta be a lot of factors that we kind of have to get through. I think it's going to be maybe a boring couple months to be honest. Um, but it's probably going to look pretty good.